What's good, class? Welcome to another episode of Honest Gaming History, the series where we try to make some sense out of these wild video game plots. Today, we're stepping away from the Star Wars lore to enter the violent world of Mortal Kombat. Thanks to you guys, the fam, we're covering Johnny Freakin' Cage, the naive actor turned action hero. Play that intro, son. So just to remind you guys, because it's been a minute since we've done a Mortal Kombat video, there are two Mortal Kombat timelines. The original that took place between Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat Armageddon, and the new and improved timeline that takes place after the events of Armageddon. So to give you guys that full Mortal Kombat experience, we'll go over both timelines. Johnny Cage, born, wait, Jonathan Carlton? This man's name is Jonathan Carlton? What kind of- Conscience, the story. All right, all right, my bad, I was wildin'. Johnny Cage, born Jonathan Carlton, was one of the best action stars in the movie business. Contrary to what some might think, Johnny Cage was actually trained in martial arts by great masters all over the world. So he's not just an actor who can do his own stunts, he's really about the hands. However, the martial arts actor wants to prove that he is a true warrior, so he makes a terrible decision of joining Shang Tsung's Mortal Kombat tournament. At the tournament, he realizes that this is some real shit. He joins forces with Raiden, Sonya, and Liu Kang, since they're the only people who are down with Earthrealm. Then with the help of Johnny and the rest of the Earthrealmers, Liu Kang defeats Shang Tsung. But unfortunately, after a fight with Goro, Sonya gets captured and taken to Outworld. I mean, Johnny escapes, but Sonya, bro. Johnny then gets interrogated by Major Jackson Briggs about where Sonya is, and Johnny tells a Special Forces member about the crazy shit that went down in the tournament. But Jax brushes it off as nonsense and sets the actor free. Then later on, he used the traumatic experience from the tournament to create the Mortal Kombat film. Not to be confused with the actual Mortal Kombat film that was like seen in theaters. Johnny stays MK free until Shang Tsung returns to propose another tournament. However, this one is a bit more serious because it will take place in Outworld. And if Outworld wins, then Shao Kahn, Outworld's leader, will initiate Outworld's invasion into Earthrealm. Earthrealm ain't ready for that shit. So Johnny reunites with the defenders of Earthrealm to head to Outworld and enter the second Mortal Kombat tournament. Cage doesn't do much here, so just know that the tournament ends with Liu Kang beating Shao Kahn. And they save Sonya, so she's all right now. But Shao Kahn's not too happy about this loss to Earthrealm, so he invades the place anyways. Shao Kahn, if you were gonna be a dick anyways, why'd you even host a tournament? Johnny Cage fights to protect his realm, but gets killed by Motaro, the centaur from Outworld. But because this is Mortal Kombat, Johnny isn't able to go to the afterlife, so he just kind of returns to his body. Yeah, I don't know. Liu Kang eventually defeats Shao Kahn again, cause let's be real, my boy Kang is a problem solver of the Mortal Kombat universe. With Shao Kahn defeated, Johnny Soul is able to ascend to the spirit world, but Earthrealm still ain't safe, bruh! Shinnok, the fallen elder god, is now after Earthrealm, so Johnny Cage is revived by Raiden to aid in the battle to save Earthrealm. Again. And guess who defeats the bad guys? Freaking Liu Kang! Again! This dude is carrying Earthrealm, bro. However, like last time, Earthrealm still ain't safe, bruh! The Netherrealm sorcerer Quan Chi found the legendary army of Onaga, the Dragon King, and he wants to revive this army to defeat the Elder Gods and rule all the realms. Teamwork makes the dream work, so you recruit Shang Tsung to help pursue his plan, and together they form the Deadly Alliance. This alliance is actually pretty competent, because they pulled the one move that every bad guy should have pulled before this. They jump Liu Kang and kill him. Ha! <laughs> Got he! <laughs> That's like 90% of their problems taken care of. Raiden recruits Johnny, Sonya, and the rest of the Earthrealm gang to stop Quan Chi and Shang Tsung before they revive this unstoppable army and use it to invade Earthrealm. But then they all get killed. See what happens when you jump the carry first? The whole team falls apart. With pretty much all his allies dead, Raiden attempts to take on the Deadly Alliance by himself, but he fails. <laughs> then right when it looks like the bad guys are about to win, these idiots turn on each other. Why? Y'all were so close. Well, it doesn't matter because Onaga gets revived, and I don't think he's too happy about someone trying to revive his army. So Onaga prepares to take some heads, but Raiden gets back up to try and take down the Dragon King with Quan Chi and Shang Tsung. The battle forces Raiden to use all of his godly essence into one powerful attack. It takes down the deadly alliance, but not Onaga. So now there's a wild Dragon King running loose on these streets. Nice job, guys. Onaga later revives Johnny to make him a slave, but he's somehow freed from the slave state by Ermac. That's like the second time Cage cheated death now. Now alive and able to do something about all this crazy stuff that's going on, Cage finds out that Shinnok is trying to take the Outworld throne. So he's like, well, can't have that, but doesn't really stop him. Shinnok just kind of runs away. Damn, Johnny Cage before the franchise reboot was kinda ass. Then Mortal Kombat Armageddon happens, where an all out war among pretty much the whole MK cast goes down. After the demise of pretty much everyone, Shao Kahn catches Raiden slipping and almost kills the guy. 
So Raiden sends a cryptic message to his past self to stop all the events that happened in this timeline from unfolding again. Thus bringing us to Mortal Kombat 9, where the new timeline starts. And don't worry, I know Johnny Cage was kind of useless like Yamcha in that last timeline, but in this timeline, he's way more important. So in Mortal Kombat 9, we are brought back to the first Mortal Kombat tournament. Shang Tsung is still up to his antics. You know how it is. Johnny Cage, still a famous martial artist and actor, is spending his time before the tournament trying to hit on Sonya. Man, all these characters are out here looking for booty. I came looking for booty. She dubs his ass, then Johnny gets put up against Reptile for his first fight. He bodies the Lizard Man, then starts talking his shit. Then Shang Tsung puts him up against Baraka, and surprisingly, he wins again. Story just started and he's already achieved more feasts than in the last timeline. Shang Tsung then commands Johnny to finish him. But Johnny is a naive actor who still thinks this is all fake, so he laughs it off. Everyone watching is dead serious though, making it obvious that Shang Tsung isn't kidding about this killing thing. So Johnny makes it clear that he's not killing anyone. With this, Sung states that the tournament will continue at dawn. Raiden and Liu Kang confront Cage afterwards and warn him about how deadly serious the tournament is. But Johnny brushes it off as some role-playing thing, stating that even if this is all true, he's an actor. He doesn't save the world in real life, only on the big screen. If our world is really that dangerous, then they should call the military. I mean, I see your point, Johnny, but what the hell is the military gonna do against Outworld? Like, when does I simply shoot a Tarkatan? And that's just one of the many threats coming from this place. The naive Johnny leaves the two in search of Sonya, because you know what they say about Sonya, she'll really put it on you. Liu Kang asks Raiden what he sees in the actor. Then the Thunder God responds by saying that Johnny is a hero. He just doesn't know it yet. Moving on to Johnny's quest for Cheeks, he finds Sonya near the pit and tries to flirt with her again. But Sonya gets really annoyed with him this time and fights him, because this is Mortal Kombat. Johnny beats her, but then the criminal from Down Under, Kano, shows up trying to finish Sonya off. So Johnny jumps into action and Shadow kicks the shit out of Kano, thus saving Sonya and earning her respect. The Special Forces operative explains that she is looking for her commanding officer, Jax. Then Cage tells her about the whole fate of Earthrealm thing that Raiden was talking about. Unfortunately, Sonya doesn't know what he's talking about and proceeds to look for Jax. After Sonya's rescue mission, Johnny, Raiden, and Liu Kang find Sonya with an injured Jax. Raiden begins to heal Jax, and Johnny explains to Sonya that Raiden is actually a god. Then Raiden talks to the Earthrealmers, telling them about the visions he's been seeing thanks to his future self, and believes that they play an important role in saving Earthrealm from Outworld and defeating Shao Kahn. Everyone agrees to help Raiden and Liu Kang with their cause, then head back to the tournament. Later, Johnny gets beat by Cyrax, and basically becomes irrelevant until Liu Kang defeats Shang Tsung and claims victory for Earthrealm. So as you can see, except for a few minor things, the two timelines are pretty similar so far. However, now is when things start to diverge. The heroes celebrate Liu Kang's victory against Shang Tsung at the Wuxi Academy. Shang Tsung appears to propose another tournament, that initiates an invasion on the Academy to further persuade the Earthrealmers to accept his offer. Oh, you thought I was just gonna come over here asking nicely? <laughs> no, 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 I'm evil, bitch. In the process, Sonya is captured by Shang Tsung, and the Shaolin Masters from the Wuxi Academy get taken as well. And Outworld is trying to absorb Earthrealm if they win, so yeah. Johnny Cage Raiden and the rest of the Earthrealmers kinda have to enter this tournament. And this time, like in the previous timeline, the boss of the tournament is Shao Kahn. So Johnny sticks with Jackson Raiden, and they enter Outworld where this MK tournament is taking place. The tournament begins the moment they arrive, and Jax is it up against Baraka. But once again, Baraka can't handle the hands. Damn, Baraka, you've been doing nothing but getting bodied. How are you so fucking strong in the game but trash in the story? After Baraka's defeat, Squad Earthrealm goes looking for Sonya. The hunt leads to a conversation with Jax and Johnny about Sonya, and Johnny basically asks if it's cool if he tries to holler at her. Jax is like, nigga, are you serious? Then they fight, and Jax whoops this boy's ass. Thank you, Jax, because this dude is wildin'. Eventually, they find Sonya being guarded by this four-armed she-dragon named Shiva. Jax beats her up, then they rescue Sonya. The squad separates with Johnny following Raiden. Together, they save the Lin Kuei assassin Smoke from getting captured by Sector and the new cybernetic Lin Kuei. So this whole cyber Lin Kuei thing was a part of the Lin Kuei's plan to mechanize themselves to basically make them a clan full of broken ass cyborg assassins. Some Lin Kuei assassins like Smoke and Sub-Zero were against this because why would you want to become a metal man? Like, yeah, you become the ultimate weapon, that's cool, but why would I want my default skin to be a Power Ranger suit? However, Sector and the majority of the Lin Kuei were down for the idea, so they already started turning Lin Kuei assassins into cyborgs. This is not super important to Johnny Cage's story, but it does become relevant in Mortal Kombat 11, so I just thought I would tell you guys now. So Johnny and Raiden save Smoke, but them saving Smoke leads to Sub-Zero eventually getting captured by the Cyber Lin Kuei. And honestly, a Cyber Sub-Zero is way more dangerous than a Cyber Smoke. So Johnny stays pretty irrelevant after this. I mean, Katana beats him up, then Ermac beats him up, and he gets kicked out of the tournament. Eventually, Liu Kang defeats Shao Kahn after the death of his best friend, Kung Lao. Then Shao Kahn invades Earthrealm anyways, just like he did in his past life. 
Johnny assists in defending Earthrealm, and luckily Raiden saves Johnny, thus preventing the death that happened by Motaro in the previous timeline. Later, after Sindel gets revived and massacres almost all the good guys, and Raiden realizes that the key to winning this is to let Shao Kahn enter Earthrealm, Liu Kang tries to engage Shao Kahn for a second time to end this invasion. Raiden confronts Liu Kang, telling him that they have to let Shao Kahn enter, so the Elder Gods can deal with him. But as you know if you saw our story of Liu Kang video, Liu Kang is sick of Raiden's bullshit, and they fight. Johnny and Sonya arrive near the end of the fight, and watches Raiden electrocute Liu Kang in self-defense, like a dickhead. Then the Elder Gods finally do something and help Raiden take down Shao Kahn, but we find out that Quan Chi was pulling the strings all along. With Shao Kahn down, and the Earth Realm weakened thanks to the invasion, both realms are pretty much up for the taking. So now Quan Chi can initiate his true plan of summoning Shinnok so he can control both realms. You see, it's the magic people you gotta keep both eyes on. So this brings us to Mortal Kombat X, which takes place a few years after the events of Mortal Kombat 9. Shinnok has started his attack on Earthrealm, and is using the revived bodies of some of the fallen warriors from NK9 as his special soldiers. This includes Sub-Zero, Jax, Smoke, and a bunch of others. But I don't know what happened over the last few years, because Johnny's hanging with the big boys now. He beats Revenant, Sub-Zero, and Scorpion in the beginning of the story. How? So Cage, Sonya, and the blind swordsman Kenshi Takeshi are on their way to the Jinshei Chamber, the home to the life force of Earthrealm, to stop Shinnok from corrupting it. They run into some old allies, like Jax and Smoke, who goes by in Nenra now, don't know what that's all about, then eventually run into Shinnok, who is in the middle of attacking Raiden and Fujin. Oh look, it's Raiden, being useless again. Johnny and Sonya attempt to fight Shinnok, but he schools them, like really schools them, then he goes for Sonya. But then Johnny starts glowing green, and blocks the attack, then... And I'm not kidding when I say this, he beats Shinnok. So the same dude who got beat by Jax, Motaro, Kitana, and Ermac just beat a fallen elder god? Where's the power scaling? Apparently Johnny's green power comes from a Mediterranean war cult. So he was secretly brawlic all this time. I don't know, let me know how you guys feel about this in the comments. I think it's stupid, like some ex machina shit, but it is what it is. After Shinnok's nonsensical loss to Cage, Raiden captures him within his amulet. Then the Earthrealm squad heads to Quan Chi's base to take care of him too. They find him, Sonya beats dog shit out of him, then Raiden uses his chance to turn Sub-Zero, Scorpion, and Jax back into their human forms. After the second war for Earthrealm, Johnny asks Sonya out on a date and she agrees. Their date leads to them doing the nasty, but apparently Johnny didn't wear a condom because Sonya comes back later saying that she's pregnant. Bro, I know you're on a quest for some cheeks, but wear protection, Johnny, come on! The two get married and begin to raise their daughter Cassandra Cage together, but Sonya's love for her job over the family caused the two to separate. Cassandra builds a friendship with Jackie Briggs, the daughter of Jax, and they spend years training together to eventually the next generation of Earthrealm's defenders. 20 years after Shinnok's defeat, Johnny Cage is now leading Earthrealm's new defenders. He formed a special team with Jackie, Cassie, Kenshi's son Takeda, and Kung Lao's younger cousin Kung Jin. He first sends them on a test mission to see if they can handle the smoke that is Sub-Zero. But they fail, because they don't believe in the universal proverb that teamwork makes a dream work. You can't solve all your problems by punching them in the face. After their failure, Johnny and Sonya call them back to the base, where they find out that Melina has Shinnok's amulet. With it, she can re-summon Shinnok, and Earthrealm does not need the negativity in its life right now. They also find out that Kano was in a refugee camp for Outworlders in Earthrealm. So Sonya beelines over there because that can't be good, but when Johnny tries to join her, she dubs his shit. Alright, now you're just being an asshole. Sonya directs the new Jedi Earthrealm squad to head to Outworld and look into the whole Melina thing. Sonya spots Kano disguised as a woman at the refugee camp, then beats dog shit out of him and almost kills a guy until Johnny stops her. Going back to the amulet, the new Jedi Earthrealm forces find Melina with the help of Kotal Kahn, the new ruler of Outworld, and Devora. Once they have her captured, Devora gives her a literal death kiss. Then Kotal betrays the Earthrealmers by holding them captive, stating that they can't be trusted with the amulet. The amulet is then given to Devora, but Devora is actually working with Quan Chi. Betrayal all up in this bitch. Going back to Johnny and Sonya, Kano told them the whereabouts of the amulet, so the two go to Jax to ask for his aid in the Shinnok situation. He accepts, then they head over to intercept Quan Chi. Thanks to Jax, they capture Quan Chi, but then Scorpion, now revived as Hanzo Hisashi thanks to Raiden, shows up looking for the dude because he found out that Quan Chi is the reason why his family was killed. But without Quan Chi, they can't fix all the people that were turned into revenants. Scorpion doesn't give a fuck, so he fights his way through Sonya, Johnny, and Kenshi beats the evil out of Quan Chi, then chops his head off. But right before this happened, Devorah showed up, tossed him the amulet, then he managed to summon Shinnok right before he lost his head. Good job, Scorpion. You literally ruined everything. I mean, the dude did kill his family, then had him thinking for years that the Link Clear is responsible for their deaths. So I kind of see where Hanzo is coming from. So our boy Hanzo's vengeance leads to Shinnok's return, 
and the first thing he does is body the fire ninja. Then he knocks out the rest of the Earthworm forces and captures Johnny because he's not trying to get hit by that ancient power bullshit again. Shinnok takes Johnny to the Jinsei so he can resume his plan of corrupting it. Luckily, Raiden shows up just in time to- No, no, don't say luckily, because you know this nigga did nothing but get smacked. I mean, he did just finish fighting Revenant Liu Kang and Kung Lao though. I'm sorry, is he not a god? Is he not the protector of Earthrealm? Do your job and protect, Raiden. <sighs> You're not wrong. So Raiden fails, but luckily, Cassie comes in clutch with the ancient Mediterranean powers that her daddy showed off previously, and beats the Elder God. You know what this is a prime example of, folks? Shitty power scaling. First, you build this beautiful power system, and then, the moment your audience understands it, you fuck it all up by having a freaking human beat a fallen Elder God when she has a fraction of the fighting experience that most of the cast does. It doesn't make sense. It, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. So after that ordeal, Raiden purifies the Jinsei but gets corrupted in the process. Liu Kang and Katana decide to run another realm since the throne is just kind of open. And Sonya, Johnny, and Cassie become closer as a family. Well, those last two sound bad, but hey, the Cage family's together again. Two years after all this, we get to Mortal Kombat 11, where everyone just looks so much better design-wise. Like, it kills me that I don't play this game a lot, cause ugh, these character models. These are the best they've ever looked. Like, ever. Fight me in the chat. Anyways, we find Johnny, now looking a little older, congratulating his daughter on becoming a commander. They share a nice little family moment, with Sonya actually showing affection to Johnny. But then Raiden comes and messes everything up. The Thunder God wants to strike Netherrealm before they have the chance to strike them. At this point, even Johnny is sick of Raiden's bullshit. But Sonya understands Raiden's point. They can't just leave Netherrealm alone like that. So together they finalize a plan of attack. Then Cassie, Jackie, Sonya, Raiden, and a whole bunch of other Special Forces units head down to Netherrealm. Their plan succeeds with them blowing up the cathedral in the realm. But sadly, Sonya sacrificed herself for the mission's success and the safety of her daughter. Cassie returns heartbroken by her loss, and Johnny hugs his daughter to try and comfort her. In Netherrealm, Kronika, the Keeper of Time, appears in front of a defeated Liu Kang and Katana. So to cheer them up, she's like, Hey guys, you don't like Raiden, I don't like Raiden, so let's create the perfect timeline where Raiden just doesn't exist. And they are down with the movements, so they join her squad. To start her dastardly plan, she brings past versions of multiple warriors from the Mortal Kombat timeline. Including in this group are young Johnny and young Sonya. So older Johnny is currently losing his mind because his annoying ass younger self is here and his wife is back, young enough to be his daughter's sister. My man was just making movies a little over two decades ago. Now he's fighting gods and dealing with time travel. My guy is stressed. And younger Sonya finds out that her older self just died, which makes everything a little more awkward. So the Earthrealm forces, now being guided by a younger and more pure Raiden, begin to make moves to stop Kronika's plan. While young Liu Kang and Kung Lao head to the Wuxi Academy, Johnny and the rest of the team chill at the base. In a weird but kind of noble way, Johnny looks at past Sonya and lets younger Johnny know that that woman is the real deal. The younger Johnny ruins the moment by letting the whole base know that he will do his duty to smash as soon as he can. Yo, this dude is really stupid. The older and more mature Johnny drags the asshole away, while Cassie tries to tell Sonya that her dad grew up and is way better now. Back to the two Johnnies, older Cage tries to tell his idiot younger self that this isn't a game. The space-time continuum is at stake here. Get your head out your ass. But then younger Johnny starts spouting more privileged nonsense, so older Johnny whoops his ass. And younger Johnny is now butter. Not soon after, the Black Dragons and the cybernetic Lin Kuei attack the good guys. I told you these cyber assassins were going to become important later. The Earth Roamers hold off the enemy, but they capture Sonya during the battle. But Johnny can't have that, so my man Cage rolls up with a freaking tank to 1v many the Black Dragons and the cybernetic Lin Kuei. But this activates the enemy's trap card, and they summon an attack plane. But Johnny saw that plane coming from a mile away, so he blows up his tank to take out the plane. Sector jumps up the plane thinking that he still got this, but to his surprise, Johnny is competent now, so he takes down the cybernetic assassin. Then the younger Kano pulls up with the Thule, trying to flex on our boy Johnny. But Johnny beat a freaking Elder God, bitch! You can't stop his smoke! So in Cage's best cutscene ever, he goes into the most pristine split, then gives Kano 100 pounds of hands, right to the jewels. Ya babies, gone. So then Cage proceeds to beat Kano to a pulp, but his sweep gets stopped by older Kano with a gun and a captured young Johnny. So with two hostages and no way to really fight back, the good guys take this L and watch his younger Johnny and Sonya get taken away. The rest of the good guys then go to Hanzo's crypt to reconvene. Younger Johnny and Sonya are taken to a Cage fight club where they are forced to fight each other for the Black Dragon's amusement. Then younger Johnny does the most useful thing he's done so far and tells Sonya to beat them so they can buy some time. And the plan actually works with Cassie Cage and her troops storming the fight club before the fight ends. They escape, but barely make it out alive. Then Sonya pulls up and 1v2s both Kanos. Then when older Kano tries to pull the whole hostage move again, Sonya shoots his younger self in the face. 
gangster. With that annoying problem out the way, younger Sonya and Johnny share a tender moment, with Johnny asking Sonya out for dinner, not to try and get in her pants, but to apologize for being a prick this whole time as to thank her for saving his life. Hey look! Johnny's learning. Sadly, this tender moment quickly comes to an end when Kronika's broken ass lackey Garrus shows up. Garrus basically can't die, and he's mad strong, so conventional methods won't put him down, which is why Cassie Cage dabs him with a forklift and blows him the fuck up. Simple problems need simple solutions. Then Sonya tells her future daughter how proud she is of her. She's a strong ass soldier and is out here killing the game. But unfortunately, Garrus decides to not die again and begins to revive. And honestly, that's all we know about Johnny Cage's story. Nothing else really happens to him after this. However, the MK11 story ends with Raiden and Liu Kang fusing to defeat Kronika. But by this point, she already reset the timeline. So it's up to God, Liu Kang, and Katana to remake the world in their image. So with an ending like this, it doesn't really matter what happens to Johnny and his younger self. The timeline has been remade, so until another Mortal Kombat comes out, we have no idea if any of the original MK characters even exist anymore. I feel like this means the next Mortal Kombat will include a mostly fresh new cast, or the same cast with different backstories. Either way, the story of Johnny Cage is pretty interesting. It had its bullshit moments like the ancient power thing, but we ain't gotta talk about that right now. What matters is that Cage is some of the best character development in all the MK lore, next to Scorpion and Sub-Zero. Actually, you know what? In the comments below, let me know who your favorite MK character is. Maybe I'll do an honest gaming history on it. Who knows? I might, I might not. You should still drop that character in. And if there are any other characters outside of the MK lore that you want me to cover, let me know in the comments as well. With that being said, end screen. Yo, what's going on, don't you fam? Thank you guys so much for watching this new episode of Honest Gaming History on Johnny Cage. Like I said before, let me know if you want me to cover anybody else in um, from the MK lore in the comments below or anybody outside the MK lore in the comments below. And I may do it. You know, I gotta do a poll and all that stuff, but if you give me some good topics, I'll throw them in a poll and yeah, we'll see how it goes. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share with all your MK friends and all that good stuff. If you wanna see more Honest Gaming History and me, then go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And hit that bell notification button as well, because if you don't, then you won't know when I update stuff on my channel as well. So yeah. And lastly, I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope you guys are staying inside. I hope you guys are still healthy and not sick. And I hope you and your families are all doing well. Let them know I said what's up. And yeah, don't you fan for life. With that being said, be easy, stay lit, take care. And remember, you can do whatever the fuck you put your mind to. All it takes is practice and time, a lot of time. All right, peace out, y'all, because there's somebody outside that's making a lot of noise.